Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. This is actually the first podcast video that I've filmed, or that I'm filming in 2022, but I know you would have already seen one this year, but that was filmed in the middle of December last year. So it's been slightly over two months since I last filmed a video, as in like a podcast video. I uh, recently just released my Make 9 video, so you can just kind of see what my the nine projects are that I really want to make this year, and you'll see two and a teaser of a third in this video. But that video is just me talking through the Instagram post that I did and mentioning what yarn I want to use for each of the projects, which might change, but it's nice to have a plan. So you have maybe seen that video, depends if you watch it. But yeah, so my first podcast video of 2022. So because it's been about two months, I have a lot, a lot to share. So it's going to be a long video. My German video was two hours long. And normally I record my German video, then my English one, on the same day. Because it's just nice to get it out of the way. It means I share exactly the same progress with all of my projects. It didn't work out this time. I was filming on an afternoon with the two hours I was then recording for my German video. It just, I was losing the light, I was tired, my throat was hurting, and I was like, no, I'm not just gonna throw in the English one as I'm like, just do it, because I know it's not gonna be as good as I want it to be. So, different day. I am wearing the same thing, but my hair is still a bit wet from um, my shower, so sorry about that, but it will dry and it will look better. And... Yeah, I have. You the the good thing is, you get to see a finished object that wasn't finished yet in my German video. So, I guess that's a good thing. They'll just get to see it the following week. Yes, I do always wonder whether I need to do like an introduction and say I'm Nina. Hi, my name's Nina. <laughs> and yeah, I'm knitting here in Germany now. Used to live in the UK. And we'll just see where my life takes me. But knitting will always be in there. Let's start with some finished objects. I normally don't say at the beginning, like, I've got this many finished objects and this many whips. I'm going to share some numbers. I have ten finished objects. <laughs> One that's pretty much finished, actually, as well. And something like 14 whips. The whips isn't surprising. If you've watched any of my videos, I always have a lot of projects that I work on. But normally not that many finished objects. But like I said, it's because I haven't filmed in about two months. Yes, let's get into it. So I've got a couple of projects that I finished that I don't have here to show you. And that's because over Christmas I was in Dubai visiting my parents. And there were a couple of things I made for my mum. So obviously they stayed there <laughs> with my mum. The first one I'd shown the yarn before, and no, 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 backtrack. What am I wearing? Because that's a finished object. So this is the, let's move my hair out of the way, the Crescendo Blouse by Sophie, who's the Knit Pearl Girl. And I think last time I shared it, I was literally just like almost done with the lace of the yoke and was going to split for sleeves, and it's completely done now. So I did these like half sleeves I guess you could call them so they're just literally elbow length and there's like four different options in the pattern for what sleeves you could do the patterns out now came out at the end of January I did post about it on Instagram and um yeah I knew I didn't want the like big puffy sleeves um which Sophie did for I think it was her blue like sample piece where I think you do like increases and then a rapid decrease and then just the cuff and it's about I think the same length maybe a little, little bit longer so like, I don't want that I didn't want t-shirt sleeves either um, because they would have gone to only about like here you do a couple of rows and then the ribbing so I, I asked Sophie is it okay if I do like a <laughs> hybrid sleeves of some of your options she was like go for it whatever you want to do and I did write in my Ravelry uh, project for this how I did it but it was about, I followed the t-shirt instructions 
and then just did a few more decreases and that's I think I did a total of five instead of the ones written for the t-shirt and yeah it gave me this length which I really liked and it's fitted but not like too fitted which is really nice uh folded collar which is growing on me and I also like it because it actually fits really well around the neck I've got too many jumpers now where the neck is quite wide and open and quite often it's because the pattern is designed that way and I've been kind of thinking about how to tweak that because I don't really like that it means I struggle to wear like a t-shirt or something underneath it and with this I'm currently not wearing a t-shirt underneath it so even though it has this lace pattern with the mohair and stuff you can't really see through it and you're just seeing the skin that would be ava available you'd see um if I was wearing a v-neck but the yarn that I used is they're both from Sunday's gone I used the fingering weight yarn I used was Sunday and the mohair was tin silk mohair which was the recommended yarn for this pattern and I shared last time what like the colors were but it's not exactly the same green they're two different greens and I absolutely love it it's so beautiful this combo I bought six skeins of both and I had to make the body longer than in the pattern I always do it's not meant to be cropped but even if something's cropped I have to make it longer than the pattern if something's meant to be like full length I have to make it longer and this sits really nicely when I just wear kind of jeans it sits like below my hip bones so it's just a really comfortable thing just to wear it as a kind of t-shirt jumper thing and what else did I want to say but yeah so I bought six skeins of both of them for the fingering weight yarn which is Sunday which is I think more of like a light fingering weight yarn because yardage wise you get a lot more and I have one skein left of that I used most of the fifth but still had a little bit left and the sixth one I haven't even touched for the tin silk mohair because that has about 212 meters per 25 grams which is kind of standard lace weight really I used some of the sixth one like very little of the final one so with this size I think I did size G and if that is the size you're looking to make as well then you could get away with five if you don't have to like do these extra lengths and if you just do the t-shirt sleeve I think you could also get away with it with the mohair and like I said it literally was just the mohair where I ran out but yeah, so it's all done. It's all blocked. I absolutely love it. I think the so much hair. I think the color is amazing. The fit is amazing. Um, the only thing with this yarn is it's my first time wearing, and I think also working with tin silk mohair. It's not just mohair and silk. It also has some wool in there as well. So from the feel straight away, it's not as soft as some other silk mohairs. But for me, I'm not very sensitive when it comes to yarn, but I'm very aware <laughs> that I'm wearing something. Normally when I wear any of my like really slouchy, relaxed jumpers, um, with mohair I'm always a bit more aware of something is on my skin, but like Surrey Alpaca don't notice it, wool in general don't notice it. Um, any of my like comfy sewn like cotton jumpers don't I, I don't even realize with this I'm aware I'm wearing something <laughs> and I mainly feel it here whereas it's, I'm probably the most sensitive I feel it a little bit here that I'm aware this is a little bit eek, and this is ooh, nice there's nothing here but those are really the two areas where I feel anything and it might be that with wear and washing it again and things that will kind of soften up but I think it is because of the wool content I'm assuming I have always felt not that mohair is itchy but that it's just a bit pricklier than just like wool or surrey alpaca surrey alpaca for me is like butter and yeah this just has a little bit of a prickle factor for me um so it's not really itchy it's just I'm aware of it and so if I get too hot in this I think it could get uncomfortable but that's also why I could wear a t-shirt underneath it but then I'm gonna get warmer and it doesn't really need it I know I'll, my skin will kind of like settle and get used to it and like I said hopefully with wear it will kind of soften up up a bit more but I just thought I'd mention that because 
that was quite a new yarn for me. The Sunday yarn feels absolutely fine. It really is just, I'm pretty sure the mohair is what I could feel. But yes, back to what I was had started talking about. I shared the yarn for a jumper I wanted to knit for my mum because she'd seen pictures again of the Primavera that I knitted for Lydia from Waco Yarns and messaged me and was like, I want one too, knit me a jumper. And I was like, well, I can. If you want me to knit a jumper, I'll knit a jumper for you. And so at first we kind of looked at yarn for that particular pattern. And then I kind of said to mum, I was like, is that even your style? Because I don't think it is. Like I love knitting it, but I'm not going to make myself one. It's not my style. There are other patterns by uh, Rachel from Unwind Knitwear that I prefer. But when we were then kind of looking at patterns and yarn and things, we kind of very quickly settled on, I'm going to knit mum a Isabel Kramer pattern. She loves Isabel Kramer. I don't know why we didn't go there straight away. But we then settled on the Manu sweater, and I'll include a picture of the pattern. Um, unless I have a picture of the finished object. I do have some like footage, which I'll include. Um, probably once I've talked about all the different projects. And, but I might also have a picture of that one. So it's a colorwork jumper, it's DK weight yarn, DK or worsted, something like that. Uh, colorwork in the yoke and at the bottom of the body, but I adapted it and didn't do colorwork at the bottom because mum didn't want it and instead did some colorwork for the sleeves. So the yarn that I used is Double Sunday, but Sunday's gone. There's a... I've just been working with Sunders Garn a lot more. I think because it's easily accessible here in Germany and I like it. It's good yarn. Uh, so it was like a really dark navy, like dark, dark blue where it almost looked black and then a lighter blue for the contrast color. And it was so lovely to work with. It was just absolutely, and the pattern was also really nice. I think that was the first time I'd made an Isabel Kramer pattern. I've got a couple of her patterns, but I haven't knitted one yet. And I think that was the first one. And yeah, it was really well written. It was really easy to do. I, by doing the color work on the sleeves, I did, however, have to modify the sleeve decreases to make sure that the um, color work pattern, I think I used the one from the bottom of the body. Um, I had to obviously work to a set of stitches where it was a multiple of the color work chart. So I think the sleeve is a little bit looser than it's meant to be. And, but it looks fine from what I could see. And the only problem is I ran out of yarn. So I think when I bought the yarn, I can't remember if I didn't take this into consideration or if I did and it still wasn't enough, but because I didn't do the color work at the bottom of the body, I needed a lot more of my main color. So even though I did color work on the sleeves, it wasn't enough to kind of account for the yardage change by not having color work at the bottom of the body. And then also like me, my mom's quite tall, so Sleeves needed to be longer, body needed to be longer than in the pattern. So I think I might have bought one extra skein of the dark blue, my main colour. Maybe I bought one extra than what it said, and it just wasn't enough. I think I have like one and a half skeins, maybe even two left of the light blue, so it would have worked. I think I would have been able to do it if I had included the colour work at the bottom, but we kind of when I realized I was running out of yarn and I was talking to mum about it, we were like, well, I could do the color work at the bottom, but if it means she's not going to wear the jumper, what's the point? So I had to leave without it being done, but literally all it needs is about an inch and then the ribbing and it's done. And then the drama began of getting the yarn because there's like one main online shop in Dubai that sells yarn and they have a very limited kind of range. They don't have Sunders yarn, but you can obviously order internationally. It just doesn't always arrive. <laughs> so it's just with Dubai not having postcodes, it can be a bit tricky to get things delivered. So mum placed an order from the UK, it didn't arrive, it got sent back some, and somehow just, like it arrived in Dubai and just got sent back, so mum didn't get it. She's now ordered more yarn from a shop in Austria, but we're doubtful that's arriving considering how long it's taking. So what I literally just did a day or two ago was I ordered some of the yarn, I think I ordered two more skeins of the dark blue, and so that's going to come to me here in Germany. But at some point soon, we're hoping that I want to go to Austria to pick up some more bits. 
my parents need to do some stuff in Austria so we're hoping to kind of do it at the same time and then mum will bring the jumper with her and then I can actually finish knitting it because originally the plan was the yarn would arrive at mum's she would finish knitting the jumper so now I actually get to finish it but so I'm counting it as a finished object because the plan was that I wasn't going to knit on it anymore and even if I do now knit on it and finish it I'm not going to share it again um, in my opinion that thing is done so that's the first finished object with just a bit of a sad and frustrating little story with it but yeah I really enjoyed knitting it sun has gone uh, double Sunday is also surprisingly nice for color work I think Sunday wouldn't be as nice because it is a merino non superwash though which makes it a bit easier to work with in color work but it's n because it's merino it's not the grippiest of yarn but I think because of the double sunder being thicker it was a bit easier to work with and I breezed through that jumper I can't remember how many days it took me but I posted on Instagram a picture of like where I was at, at the with the yoke and I said do people think I can finish this in like I think I had a week maybe two weeks I can't even remember now and after sharing that picture by the end of I think after that, like two days later, the body was done. And then I did a sleeve in one day, sleeve the next day. And then that was it. Well, obviously I didn't finish the body. I kind of went as far as I could. And yeah, it was a really quick knit for me. I think it also helped knowing if I, I need to get this done before I leave because I didn't want to take it back with me to Germany. Though in some ways that would have been a good thing because then I could have just immediately ordered more yarn and there wouldn't have been. But that's the first thing for my mum. Then I did a little like surprise thing for her. There's every year around Christmas time, there's this mystery knit along for a gnome. I can't remember who the designer is, but she does it every year. I've never made one, but I've seen other people like Helen from uh, Giddy Yarns. Um, I think she's made every single one so far. And I just thought it was so cute. And I was like, I know my mum quite likes gnomes. I would love to make this. So I asked, could I use some of her scrap yarn for a project and picked out four different colors of Malenvad from Lana Cossa that she had in her stash and just knitted that up over a couple of evenings and then kind of surprised her with the finished, finished gnome. And once again, you'll see like video footage of it or photos, maybe both, I can't remember. And yeah, it was a really fun and quick knit and you've got like this big gnome which was really fun to knit and with his beard and his little nose and then you make a little backpack and you have a little gnome in the backpack and it was just adorable. So I think that particular gnome I might want to make for myself with some scrap yarn once I've got some in Germany. I don't really have much scrap yarn right now and make my own. And probably that one again. I'm not sure I'm gonna do these every year. It was that one in particular just appealed to me because of the little gnome in the backpack. But that was a fun thing. And mom was really happy with the with the little surprise. And then I also made mum some Sunday socks. So I shared in my last podcast that I'd finished those five pairs for my cousin and her family. And I then took along that scrap yarn I'd already started, I don't think I'd even started it. So I just took along the scrap yarn and was like, oh, I could make some Sunday socks. And I used one of the blue colors where I had a lot left and the kind of white cream colored, the gray white cream color and made my mum some like stripey Sunday socks out of those scraps. And yeah, they looked really nice. Mum wore them one morning at the beach uh, where we were just knitting and relaxing by the beach because it was freezing cold. Um, <laughs> Because even though Dubai does get warm, quite early in the morning, if the sun isn't up yet, we were freezing. So that was another thing I did for my mum. And then the final thing was, I think I've been seeing so many pictures of people making the Humlebi shawl. And I was like, oh, I want to make another one. I love it so much. And mum had already made one for herself, but it was with really different yarn. I think the weight of the yarn was off. So the whole shawl just wasn't as big as it was meant to be. And... She had bought yarn from a hand dyer in the UK, which was the same base as the one that I did, which is a BFL Massim DK yarn. And hers was, oh, I have the yarn. I have the yarn here. 
So it was this yarn here. It's a really beautiful with the blue and the brown and oh, I love it. And she had three skeins of this to make the Humla shawl. And then just kind of said to me, was like, she was like, do you just want to make it for me? And I was like, I can't use your yarn and take away your knitting project. And she was like, no, it's fine. If you want to make it, go ahead. And so I made it the Humla shawl. I think I did it in five days. So my first one took three days. My said the second one took five days and it only took five days because I had other projects I had to finish. I think one of them being this test knit. So I'm addicted to that pattern and it looks beautiful in this yarn with the two different colors in it. Absolutely stunning. And I love this base. It's just soft, but woolly and just amazing. And I made it quite a bit longer than mine. I already included extra pattern repeats but I did even more for mum because I know that with my yarn so like I said it's the same base it's from a different dyer but I think it's exactly the same yarn yardage wise and everything and feel wise and I had more than half a skein left even though I already did quite a few more pattern repeats so I then did even more for mum because we both agree like a wide shawl is what we really want and I still have a lot left so I think I might have, I definitely included um, the info of how many I did in a previous video, maybe it's on Ravelry, but I think you, um, so you cast on all the stitches at first for the Humla Bee shawl, and then you do the patterns and like decreases to build the shawl, instead of like building up your uh, stitch count, you're decreasing, which just I find really motivating, incredibly motivating. Yeah, so the, like, bees and everything, the pattern repeat and how you decide to make it longer is you always add, like, 10 extra stitches to your cast on. And I think I did a total of 60 extra. Or maybe even 80 extra. And still have plenty of yarn left. So I could have made it even bigger. But then it reaches a point where, like, if it gets too big, it's just not practical to wear anymore. But yeah, and the mum was like, you can have the scraps. And I was like, ooh, I love this yarn, thank you. <laughs> no idea what I'm going to do with it, but... I've got, in Austria, I've got my scraps from my Home Libby shawl, like I said, same base, and I've got a few more skeins of um, BFR Massim DK from Wool and Twine, so I can maybe just use the scraps from all of those at some point and make something with it, because I love using my scraps. I don't do it often enough, but I love using my scraps. And that was the last thing I made for my mum. Uh, so it was a few bits for mum, but it was really nice to make for other people and yeah, it's just something I've been thinking a lot more about since the beginning of this year about knitting for other people, how much I did of it and I mentioned in my Make 9 that I want to do a video talking a bit more about that and my plans and thinking um, for this coming year regarding my knitting, so I'll save that for the future video.
then a project you have seen before that I just randomly kind of finished in January where I was just like, I think I was still kind of just tired and even though I had an amazing time in Dubai, I was coming back to a lot of stress and a lot of admin stuff I had to do and work stuff and then the pandemic stuff still stressing me out and all the projects I kind of had just required too much of me except this one. So I have finished the Oslo hat by Petit Knits and the yarn that I've used is, I've got it here, so organized, uh, Vesa Classic by Phil Kalana in the color Marzipan and the other one is Tin Silk Mohair by also by also no by Sun is gone um so this is literally just their silk mohair not the tin silk mohair silk mohair and it comes in 50 gram balls and I stupidly when I first showed that I was working on this was like yeah I need 100 grams from both no you need 100 grams of the fingering weight and the um equivalent yardage wise of the mohair so I only needed 150 grams gain so I have another one of these um, and the reason I still have anything left of the fingering weight yarn, because this is the second skein, I used a bit of it, and I still have so much of this mohair left, is because I changed the pattern a bit. So the way that the Oslo hat, this is the mohair edition, but works pretty much exactly the same as the um, one where you hold fingering weight yarn together. But what you're meant to do is you knit for a certain length, fold that together and knit your cast on edge together with your live stitches to create this folded brim. Then you're meant to knit for another, almost the equivalent of this because it's meant to be a triple brim. So you're meant to like wear it folded over again. And that's what I've done with the other two Oslo hats I've made. And I like it, but it gets very thick and it gets very warm. And I was like, I'm just not feeling it. So I modified it to, and it was a bit tricky to figure out, well, how long do I have to make this if I don't do the folded brim to make sure it's slouchy, but not too slouchy um, before doing the decreases. And it worked out quite well, but that's why I used much less yarn because I skipped about like this much knitting. <laughs> and it's not that I didn't want to do it. It was just, I wanted a good fit for it. So um, fit wise, like, the amount of stitches, perfect, but like I said, I've made two before. And it's got a decent amount of slouch, you know. Could could have been more, but any less would have been bad. And yeah, I did say that I wasn't sure if I was going to keep this because the colours aren't exactly my thing, but I think I quite like it. And I quite like how the mohair has created this like epic striping pattern i think it's amazing because obviously it's the mohair doing all the work here because the base color i love this color though i can see myself buying more making a jumper out of this marzipan color because it's just such a it's not white it's just a really neutral kind of cream light gray light beige color beautiful so i think one of my favorite colors actually um when it comes to neutrals I love greens. I love greens too much to give them up. Yeah, so I finished this. It hasn't been blocked yet. I have woven in the ends though. I've already chopped them as well. Might have already chopped them. I've been trying not to do that anymore. I did that with this one that I wove in the ends, blocked it, and once it was dry, chopped, um, chopped off the ends. And I think I actually do prefer that. It's a lot more work to then remember. In my German video, I then kind of like did this and I was like, oh, there's an end hanging out. I forgot to chop off. But yeah, so this will hopefully get somewhere soon. I think I might not even have to block this one. The only thing it would do is just kind of even out the decreases a bit and make sure that all sits really nicely. Um, yeah, maybe I will just give it a quick block. It's a hat. It's not going to take too long to dry, especially not with the amazing heating in this apartment. So that's the Oslo hat. Another one that you've seen before where I said in my last video, I'm going to get this done while I'm in Dubai because I have to get this done. I didn't finish it when I was in Dubai. I didn't even knit on it while I was in Dubai. But I think after I finished that hat and I was like, Nina, stop finishing things you don't need to finish. I know you want to knit on it, but you do have some kind of um, responsibilities, I guess is the word I'm looking for. 
But I have finally finished The Breathe and Hope Shawl by Casapenka. So this is a sample piece that I made for Jen from Castle View Yarns, a hand dyer in the UK, and she sent me the two skeins of yarn, which I've got here, which are Agnes and Agatha, uh, when, while I was still in the UK. And I then messaged her and was like, because I'm going to, I don't think I said this, I'm going to be in the UK at the end of March for East Anglia Yarn Festival. Um, so I'll be kind of helping out a bit, but also, of course, shopping and seeing some of my friends and things. And because Jen's going to be there, I said, do you want me just to bring it? And then there's no, like, having to pay postage and custom fees and things. And she's like, that would be amazing. And because I used, knitted this up with two skeins of yarn, the payment is then two skeins of yarn. So I can then just pick them up there. But the yarn I loved. I like Jen's yarn, it's really nice to work with. This is just her standard merino sock base, the so 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. And I said before I was worried the contrast wouldn't be kind of strong enough, good enough for this pattern. But you can see here, it's absolutely wonderful. Here it gets a little bit more lost and I'm hoping, I haven't blocked this yet, I've woven in the ends. Haven't blocked it, but like I said, I haven't chopped them off, I remembered. Um, so I'm hoping it will help kind of make those the stitch patterns in some of these sections come out more. Um, so yeah, yarn was lovely, and you then had the section at the end, which really needs a good block, where you did some ribbing, and then you've got these little, like, bobbles or knobs that stick out. And they really need a block to pop. So yeah, it's all done. Just needs blocking. Uh, I hated this pattern. <laughs> so, I don't often hate knitting patterns. And maybe hate is a strong word, but I didn't enjoy knitting this. The only time I enjoyed any part was when I did the slip stitch stuff here. Um, so you never actually do any colour work in the sense of like holding two yarns at the same time. you It's just using slip stitches and knitting with one color. That was fun. You do go up a needle size to make sure this lies nice and flat. People did say on the Ravelry page for this pattern that it still didn't work, it's still puckered and kind of like was too tight for them. But for me that worked really well. Like even without blocking, that is sitting so nicely and you can see at the back, like it's just beautiful how it's sitting there. It's better than my color work. Um, so that was really fun. Everything else? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> constantly had to check the pattern and constantly, I don't, I'm not a huge fan when a pattern says, okay, you've got these three different sections. Do section one, section two, section three. Go back and repeat section two, then do section three, then do section one, then do section three. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it's never going to change. I am frustrated and bored by the same thing and I can't get into a rhythm. I constantly have to check the pattern. And then also the stitch count is constantly increasing. And I was just like, I hate shawls. I hate shawls. <laughs> but then, you know, you've got the Humla Bee shawl where I absolutely devoured that twice now. So I think it is just, I've learned a lot about what kind of shawls I like knitting and what I don't. And this was definitely one I didn't. I'm not the only one. I've had a look on Ravelry and people said, considering it was intended for, it's called Breathe and Hope. It was designed within the pandemic to kind of as a pattern to escape everything that's going on and have a moment for yourself where you can just sit and concentrate on this. So it was good for the sit down and concentrate on it, but for me it wasn't relaxing and that's what I want. If I'm stressed and anxious or worried about something, I want a pattern where it's not that it's mindless, but that it is something that I can lightly concentrate on I don't mind checking the pattern, but please don't make me check the pattern every row. That's what I really don't like. So that's why I think in part I enjoyed this section here. Because while there were a few bits at the beginning and end of the rows that were a bit confusing, everything out, it was the most intuitive part. And I could kind of very quickly figure out that part, but the other ones, no, no, no. I think it looks good. Um... 
and you know I'm glad that I've made it for Jen but I didn't enjoy knitting this and the only thing that got me through was the yarn because it's nice to work with so even though I did not like the pattern the yarn was pleasurable to knit with and then also the fact that I was like well it's not for me I think if I'd been making this for me I would have <laughs> so you start here I think I would have already quit and given up by the time I got to like here because well that's sort of what I did when I don't know if I showed it off the first time I think I did at least you only had about this much and was like yeah, yeah I need to focus on it and I didn't <laughs> I just didn't <laughs> but so that one's done and I will wash it and give it a block and then it will come with me to the UK at the end of March so I can give it to Jen and it will also be nice to like give it to her in person I don't think I've ever met Jen in person I, I've messaged her a bit on Instagram but I don't think I've ever like had a face-to-face -face conversation that's that one <laughs> we still got more the next one is what I hinted at in my make nine well I didn't hint I knew she said it that I'd already finished the wild posy hat so here it is it's not blocked yet I've woven in the ends though and it's just it needs a block it needs a block but here it is it's got this amazing stitch pattern with um, these kind of elongated stitches and then these long slipped stitches and stuff and oh, it's amazing and I used Pletilope held double like it says in the pattern and I did it in almost a day but the first time I did it um, I then started to get to the decreases and I was like this looks huge this doesn't look right so then took out the needles and then really like held it up and it was about like this big and I was like oh that could almost be a jumper lovely ripped it out went to a smaller needle size um, which I'd already done because I did a little did I do a little swatch I think I did um, and had already dropped down but apparently it wasn't enough and so then I dropped further with my needle size but not too much I knew I needed to drop further to get the right gauge but I didn't want a super stiff hat. So I then, instead of doing the biggest size, which I would have needed if I'd gotten gauge, I did the second size instead. And this really needs a block because it's looking like all lumpy and, but I will put it on. So it's an interesting hat because it's not really slouchy. And I think Melody, well, well Posy hat by Melody Hoffman, I didn't officially say it. I think she wears it kind of like up like that. I'm a huge fan of that. So I'm still, I want to block it before I see how I'm going to wear it. But this is going to be so warm. But I also think it's really cute. I love the pattern. I really want to make the jumper now. So I think there's like two different versions, but <laughs> I just have to make both. Um, yeah, so then even when I ripped back and did it again, it didn't take long. And... Yeah, could have totally done it in one day. But that's because the yarn um, is quite thick. Plus, Lopi held double is thick. And that was why I didn't want to drop too far with my needle size. I think it would have actually benefited from being knit on a bigger one. Or just knit with Plus, Lopi held single. But it's a bit more fiddly doing it single. Um, because it's unspun yarn. So it doesn't have the most strength before it's worked with. Or... Um, if it's just held single and the final one not the final one I've got two more <laughs> my bad I this is probably one of the ones I'm most proud of because it just I couldn't believe it I have finally finished the Imka socks I will hold for applause <laughs> I have been struggling with these I think for almost a year if not over a year I've been thinking, oh, I'm sure I started them last year. But the more I think about it, I'm like, was it maybe 2020 that I started these? I think it was last year, though. And with my first sock, I got to about here. Um, I had just kind of started doing the increases for the heel. And I just stopped. I couldn't do it anymore. I was already working on it so slowly because like I've said many times, Cables and I have not been friends 
And it was after I got back from Christmas that I was looking at all the whips that I have. And I've said this many times, I have an Excel spreadsheet where I keep a record of all my whips, what stage I'm at, what needle size I use, and I update it every now and then. But um, I do a new kind of column of all of that at the end of every month. So that every month I have like a record of how many projects I've started, how many are finished, where I'm at, to see some progress with some projects. And I'd just seen that these have been on there for so long and I was just like, just finish them. I know, I knew I had to do a whole nother sock and was like, the pain, no, I can't handle it. And I was like, well, just finish one. And I did. In an evening. So I was about here and then just sat down and finished the whole thing in an evening. And it has a really long ribbing and these are blocked. The ends are woven in. And so this is how you're meant to wear them. And sadly, this is one of the annoying things with having already not filming, like my English and my German video at the same time. I um, already woven the ends and cut them off and everything because I didn't for my German video because I wanted to show off that the yarn that I used for this is the Mohair Blend by Blacker Yarns, which is the pattern used, which is the, pattern, which is the yarn used in the pattern. Um, so these are from 52 Weeks of Socks, and it's exactly the yarn that you used in the same colour, I think, as well. And each ball comes in 50 grams, and you needed two of them. So I was like, oh, one for each sock. Well, I can exploit that. So I actually, the leg part of my sock is shorter than in the pattern, because I wanted this folded ribbing, and I knew I wouldn't have enough yarn if I made this as long as it said, plus... I tried them on once I think I was at this stage and was about to start the ribbing and I was like if I do these longer I'm not gonna wear them um because they'll just be too kind of long and annoying and I was like this is the perfect length for me with boots and everything and by the time I then kind of I knitted the ribbing as long as I could before I was like I have to bind off and it worked out to be exactly how long the ribbing was meant to be but from where I cast off, I had about like a meter left of yarn that I used for weaving in. And I was like, that's so satisfying that once I'd woven in the ends and cut it off, that was literally just going into my, um, st not stash, a uh, little collection I have of all the little ends of yarn that you can't do anything with anymore that I'm saving up to then send to Hedgehog Fibers because they make their yarn with it, like the Tweedy yarn or whatever it's called. And yeah, so that was really satisfying. And then that evening when I finished the first one, I was like, start the second one right now. Because if you start it, you're more likely to then work on it because the first bit is a bit fiddly with the, cause it's toe up. So I then in an evening, I think got to about here. <laughs> so I'd started and did the toes the same evening as I finished the first one. And then the next evening I sat down, did all the foot, did all the increases, did the heel and got to here following evening I finished it. So in about two days I could have knitted these but no it took me almost a year maybe longer I can't really remember anymore and they're so beautiful they're really warm they these are not socks I can wear in the house they very much are socks for outside um for like walking and stuff and with the mohair that's in here they should be really strong so we'll test it. I've got more of this yarn in a variety of different colors, so I can make them again if they wear holes in them. But we'll see if that's possible. But by the time I finished these socks, I was like, I need a jumper with cables now. This was so much fun. I suddenly just realized that you only work cables like once every like four, five, six rows, depending on what kind of cable you're doing. And I was like, why did I, why was there such a drama queen about this? <laughs> why did I think it was that hard? Because yes, it slows me down, but it's not very often. And I just, I think it's that you don't come to the cables. Like you don't do cables all the time, which means I was going quickly and then slowing down for the round quickly and then slowing down. And then eventually I just got into a rhythm and I was like, this is okay. It's actually fun to break up the speed knitting and suddenly go, oh, it's a slow round because I have to cable. And I stopped looking at the pattern because I was like, oh, it has to be a left one. It has to be a right one. And it was then fun to kind of figure it out on my own instead of using the pattern. So there will be a cable sweater in my future. We'll see whether I actually manage to finish that one at all. But currently, 2022 might be the year of cables for me. I think 
was it 2020 or 2021 that was the year of color work for me i can't remember but yeah so maybe this is the year of cables but these are absolutely stunning i love them so much i'm so glad they're done and then the final finished object i know i know it's already been 40 around 45 minutes and i'm still not done with finished objects but this is what happens when christmas break and i did a lot of knitting and then you know but i want to share these i worked hard on these i have finished the grow socks by fiber tails so in my German video with my second sock, I'd already finished the first sock and I just started the toe decreases for my second. And after I finished filming, I was like, oh, I'm going to have a relaxing evening now, drink something, have some food and sit down and finish the sock. And then I did it, immediately blocked them. And as they were drying over there, I was like, I haven't filmed my English video. So something that was a whip in my German is now finished object of my English video. And I was like, oh no, that means for my next episode, I have to remember I have to talk about them as a finished object in my German, but in my English, they're done. We can move on from them. I can maybe talk about them if I, you know, wear them. And I was like, oh damn, that's going to be confusing. But anyway, so the grow socks have this beautiful cable, also cable, um, leaf detail along the top, which is just mm, so beautiful. And last time I shared these, I just started the first row of my first sock and I didn't even finish it. And I'd said like, me and cables, it's just not working out. <laughs> and I reached a point where I was like, yeah, but it's only a couple of rows of cables and you don't work them every round. And then after that, it's just a vanilla sock. Um, so heel flap and gusset, and then you've got the decreases and then you just do a uh, wedge toe. And I was like, so it's really just vanilla socks with a little bit of flavor. I love that. And then I got them done really quickly and I did knit these on two millimeter needles. They were designed on 2.25, but because I've discovered I'm a bit of a loose knitter, I was like, let's drop down to two. Um, just because the yarn that I've used here is uh, Wool and Twine's Corridale sock base. So it's 100% Corridale, non-superwash, doesn't have nylon. And it's in her evergreen color from her um, like advent sock set where you got four different colors and so because it doesn't have any nylon in it by having a tighter gauge it means your socks are going to be stronger the yarn also had a really high twist which you won't be able to really see anymore but before i blocked these the stitches were really uneven that's what happens with high twist and now that i've blocked them they've really smoothed out and look stunning so I haven't worn these yet, they've literally just finished drying. And you can also probably see that they're a little bit longer than my sock blockers. So this is something um, I can't remember, was it from Emma's podcast of Woolly Mammoth Fiber Co? That because these are going to felt, just like normal socks, they're going to felt, and most likely they'll felt in the heel, that's what I've had in other socks, they might felt a little bit in the toes. And when something felts, it shrinks. So by making these a little bit longer, when they do felt, they'll still fit and they won't then become super tight and are then less likely to kind of wear quicker. So I've made them slightly longer where they'll still fit, but if they do felt, they'll fit even better. Um, so we'll see how these wear, but I think they're beautiful. I'm definitely making more of these. I'm not entirely sure yet what color I want to do, but I also want to knit Lega's new sock design, the VAR socks. And for me, this was also practice for the grow shawl, which I want to do soon. So they're now done as well. So beautiful. I was a bit worried that I'd done this cable too tight, but with blocking, it's also sorted itself out. So it is a little bit snug when I have to pull this over my heel. Um, so what I did is I did 64 stitches, my usual stitch count across here. Um, and like I said, it was a little bit tight before blocking. And what I did is when I did the decreases, I only decreased to 68 instead of the 64, just to give myself a little bit more room, um, because I was worried that this was too tight. It's okay, but I definitely would have benefited from going for like the next size up for that. Yes, those are all the finished objects. So I have some blocking to do 
Um, probably won't happen today, but at some point soon. And yarn wise for that one, I've got this much left of 100 grams. And I've got a few more skeins of Wool and Twine's Corridor Sock Base, so I'll be keeping these and then probably do some colorwork socks in the future. So you can see the, hopefully see the high twist a bit better. Yeah, so that kind of helps with the wear as well by having that high twist instead of the usual kind of ply uh, for socks. Okay. Now we can move on to my whips, and like I already said before, there's a lot of them. Let's start with something you've seen before. Um, I quite like doing it in that order so you can see progress on projects that I've shared before instead of jumping straight into like new ones and stuff. And I think I said in my last video, the sofa I'm sitting on makes so many noises when I move, so apologies for everything that you hear when I move. But... I've been making the September sweater for by Petite Knits for my friend Len using his hand dyed yarn, um, Frog and Fish Yarns. He's currently taking a break um, for, I think, like health reasons and things, but is hoping to come back to dyeing in the future. So this is his hand dyed yarn, and this is Mohair uh, from Georgie of the Fiber Fox in her Happy Accidents colorway. And I forgot to say this in my German video, but my mum bought me a wool winder. <laughs> so I have one in Austria, but I couldn't bring it with me here, suitcase space. And my mum just, I think, was like, she has suffered enough, let's buy her a wool winder. So it arrived the other day, so I finally can wind cakes again instead of this, <laughs> which takes so long. Um, but mum did decide, she was like, let's just go for the wool winder. Um, because those do have a tendency to break over time. So it's the Knit Pro one again that I've got in Austria. And um, that's also, I think, the cheaper part than the Swift. And she was like, hopefully you can figure out a way to kind of wind it up then. And I was like, no, that saves my life because you can do other things if you don't have a Swift. Um, so it does mean that my cakes aren't always the most even because I don't have the Swift, but I'm like, this has already changed my life so much. But last time I shared this with you, I had very little done. I was still working on the back piece and I think I just stopped increasing. And I've got a lot more to show you now. So, here it is. You will notice it now has the folded collar already worked in there. Uh, I did that as soon as I finished the body. Uh, it took a really long time to finish the body. <laughs> Because it's knit entirely in brioche, except the ribbing isn't, isn't like ribbing at the bottom in this here. But it's a brioche jumper that is really slow moving for every two rounds you actually knit. You're really just progressing by one round because of how it's worked. And it is done on relatively big needles, five millimeter, but it's also holding two strands of yarn together really slows me down because I have to, and with brioche as well, I have to look at what I'm doing to make sure I don't drop anything and don't make mistakes because it's much harder to fix. I'm getting better at it though. And because Len is coming to East Anglia Yarn Festival, I was like, well, I have to finish this by the by then so I can give it to him and don't have to then like send it and he can then, you know, I can give it to him in person. And we've never met in person. So we've got our knit night and, you know, we talk occasionally, but um, we've never met in person. Whereas everyone else in my knit night, I've pretty much met now in person at Yarndale. So I've just started the first sleeve, like literally done like a couple of rows and hopefully finish that um soon and do the second one and like I said I did the this first because I think it then makes the jumper like look more real and done so two sleeves to go and then this is done and I've still got plenty of yarn I've got a whole nother thing of the mohair and the DK weight yarn I've got two more uh cakes of it as well and I still have most of this one so making good progress on that now especially considering how long I've been working on it. So it's a wedding present for him. He got married back in November, but he was understanding about the fact it's going to take me a while to finish that. And yeah, it's been really nice working with his yarn and also Georgie's yarn and just kind of, whenever I work on a project for someone, I spend quite a bit of time because the projects take quite a while if it's a jumper. 
I spend a lot of time thinking about the person I'm knitting for and then with this one I was also thinking about Georgie because it's her yarn and stuff and she's also friends with Lynn and it's just oh, makes me happy that project so that's the September sweater Brr. When you have so many projects, you don't know what to share next. I'll share another old, a goodie, but an oldie, an oldie, but a goodie, whatever way around that goes. Um, there's actually quite a bit to show with this one because once again, I've made a lot of progress. It is interesting though, isn't it? If I'd focused on fewer projects, I would have had so many finished ones, but that's just not how I knit. I knit what I feel like knitting. Sometimes I knit on what I have to knit on because of deadlines and things but I enjoy that actually. So my Fru Alstad, we have good progress. Last time I shared it, I had just kind of finished the first section, which was all the moss, double moss stitch stuff. And now it's hard to see. You kind of have to get like the light, the angle correct, but the moss stitch stops here. Then there's a garter ridge. Then you have a triangle like up and down section using uh, knit and pearl stitches. And then the next section is this kind of like also textured motif. And then you've got the triangles again, um, like arrows, but they're pointing like in the opposite direction to the previous one. And I am just now on the row where I finished the like garter ridge for the final section. And I'm on the actual like snowflake section. I think they call it stars though. I think they look like snowflakes. So the row that I'm about to work is the first row of that pattern. And it is a relatively long pattern I have to work through. I think it might be more than 20 rows. Whereas these ones were all quite short. Like I think this one was like eight rows. So I did it really quickly. And I've got a lot of stitches on here now. I think I'm at the 400 mark and by the end I have 500 stitches or something. But I don't know what it is with the shawl. I've just really enjoyed working on it. So that whole theory of, oh, I only like shawls where you cast on all the stitches from the beginning isn't true. I think it's a combination of good yarn, good pattern. So apparently I've made some mistakes previously with shawls that I've chosen. But the yarn that I'm using is Frosted Sea Glass by the Fiber Fox. And this is how much I've got left of my second skein. I have a third. It's in Austria. Another reason why I want to go to Austria, because I can't finish this until I'm there. There is no way that this yarn will last until the end, because I've been, you do an I-cord edge uh, where you increase, and so when you then finish the pattern, the last, like, um, chart, you then have to do an I-cord bind off, and that's going to take a lot of yarn. So this isn't going to last. I've got a third one, so it's absolutely fine. And yeah, I've really made a lot of progress on this recently. All this year, I think. I might have done... No, definitely. Yeah, it was all this year. Um, I thought I found a mistake. We're all good. <laughs> so hopefully that won't take much longer, but it is kind of a bit... It's a project that I don't have to work on. It's one I kind of just pick up when I feel like doing something and working from a chart because I have to look at the chart, especially now. Um, the pattern repeats within the chart are much longer than they were before. But I've really enjoyed working on it. And yeah, once I have the final skein of yarn, I'll be able to finish that. Then that one. And then... So many whips, so many whips. What do I want to share next? I don't even know. Um, something else that you've seen before is... So the... Crescendo blouse, I wanted to try and finish so I could wear it for Christmas. And I got to the point where I'd finished the body on Christmas Eve, 24th, which is Christmas day for me. Um, and I had another sleeves yet and I was like, well, it's just not gonna happen. That's fine. And ended up wearing something much kind of cozier, more relaxed, which is actually the kind of Christmas vibe I really like. And I then finished this one over like a day or two after that. And I'd also said, oh, I want to finish this jumper I'm, I have using yarn from Hillesvag. That didn't happen. I didn't even bring it with me. Oh, no, I did bring it with me to Dubai. I don't think I've really worked on it at all. But when I got back once again was when I did some work on this one here. And I finished the, like, flea snowflake section up here. And I've started working the top of the tree pattern. 
So there's still quite a lot to go with this, but it's one of those projects where once the color work is done, it's just stocking it in the round and it's going to go really quickly. And I'm okay with this taking a bit longer. It was a kind of extra project. I was a bit ambitious, hoping to knit as quickly as I wanted. And so the two colors, um, they're both the base is Sol by Hillesvag and in this kind of natural cream in this dark green color. And the colour work has been fun so far, it's just a bit hard when I've got a round where I have to do colour work and increases because you increase in the main colour but my main colour is on my right hand and I'm normally a continental knitter but colour work I knit with both my hands and my contrast colour has to be my left hand which is normally my main hand, knitting hand and my contrast colour has to be in my right because of colour dominance and it means I have to increase with my right hand, which I'm not really used to, so it's a bit slow and awkward. And I always kind of have to like hype myself up a bit for one of those rounds, and I think the next one I have to do is one of those. And then when you've also got long floats with that, I'm just like, this is a bit challenging. <laughs> so made some progress, but not a lot, but it will continue to be made slowly, and I'm okay with that. And a little bit of progress has also been made on my poet shawl, um, by Sari Nordland, which I'm knitting using the advent calendar, um, the Fiberfox advent calendar from 2021. So I finished the first color and you can see kind of the second color that I've started here. The ball is a mess, but eh, you're not going to be able to see the color very well. It shows up a bit better in here. So I'm still just on the moss stitch and I don't know what it is, but I really enjoy moss stitch. Um, it was part of the reason why the Fru Alstad shawl has been so good because at the beginning I didn't really have to pay attention because it was just increase here and increase there, do moss stitch in between. This one it's a bit harder because there's like a 10 row pattern repeat because you don't increase, you, you increase but also decrease on certain rows and I just haven't, because I haven't worked on it consistently, I haven't been able to get into the groove of it but this project is going to be huge though. So I'm only on day two and I'm okay with this being a project that I know it's going to take a little bit longer. Currently there's a lot because of East Anglia Yarn Festival that I want to focus on finishing first, but then hopefully this will kind of climb to the top of my priority list. I also realized when I went through and looked at kind of the whips I was working on, what I could cast on next, I have a lot of shawls on the go right now. For someone who's kind of like, eh, I don't enjoy knitting shawls, I have a lot on the go and had a lot on the go and have a lot more that I need to cast on soon. And I was like, what has happened to me? Um, next one that you've seen before as well is what I have termed and called my friendship blanket. And I'm now on the third color. So you can see here, first color is the green. Um, then the blue and now I've started on the purple and I'm only about halfway on my first row and the yarn is a fade a mini five skein mini set from skein in the stitch it's a friendship fade and yeah so I do four rows of each color before changing color and it uses up most of the yarn, but some of it will still be left. And so what I've done, these still, these need blocking, so they're not gonna look great, is Cookston Crafts over Christmas released a free crochet patterns for like little snowflakes. So it needs a block, so it all kind of sits nicely. But that's what I've then been making and I'm hoping I can get through all five skeins of this mini fade set and then use the scraps to crochet these little snowflakes and block all of them and then make like a little garland for it. So I've got the green one done. I only have one of these because the green is what I used on to um, like chain my first stitches. So I used a lot more yarn, but I'm hoping considering I've got the blue done already now as well. And I managed to get two out of the blue that there'll be two of all the other ones. So Jess from Skein in the Stitch, whose yarn this is, will be at East Anglia Yarn Festival. And I thought that would be a nice little present. Like she doesn't have to use it at her stall at East Anglia Yarn Festival, but I thought it'd be nice to have worked with her friendship fade set and then give her like a little garland with little snowflakes of her, 
of her yarn. I thought that would be cute. She doesn't know I'm doing this. I don't think she watches these videos, so. And if she does, well, now you know, Jess. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I want to try and focus on this blanket a little bit more. A row doesn't really take me all too long, and it's not a project where I have to focus on it too much. Uh, and it's not like I'm increasing my stitch count at all. So the work just kind of stays consistent. And it is just a really fun, almost mindless project. So it should be doable by the time that I need to pack up and head to the UK. More projects. Another one that you've seen before, I think. I think I shared it in my last one. Even I can't remember these things anymore. Uh, I've been making a pair of socks for a friend of mine from York. And I finished the first one. The yarn that I'm using is from West Yorkshire Spinners. It's the Robin colorway and it's so cute, so adorable. So he has bigger feet than I do. So I've had to cast on 72 stitches. I've had to make it longer than for my foot. And so they take a lot longer. <laughs> I'm using 2.25 millimeter needles. I'm using my Chiago Shorty set um, where I use one of the longer set of like one longer needle one shorter one and i've just finished the heel flap and i'm just doing the decreases for like the gusset so after that won't be too much left it will just be the leg which will go really quickly and then toe decreases are my favorite things on socks and yeah so they're coming along quite nicely i did all of the leg in a couple of hours when I was chatting with my parents over the weekend. So when I actually focus on socks, like I said before, they really don't take me that long. So I want to try and finish these before I go to the UK because then I'll send them from the UK because it will be much cheaper than from here. But I'll talk a little bit more about my knitting plans at the end because there's a couple of projects I want to focus on and I'll kind of, not just for your entertainment, but also for my, <laughs> sanity talk through them to make sure I don't forget anything and when I started the second to make sure they roughly match um, I had to wind off like a little bit of the yarn which will just go into like a scrap yarn pile because this could be used for like a fun little either cuff or toe or heel I think it's quite funny when it's self-striping yarn that's that one what else have you seen before let me let me look at my cheat sheet Okay, so there's one project left that you've seen before. And there's a little sad tale with these ones. Uh, with, well, with this one. And my tale of woe. Uh, I showed last time that I'd started the Enderlaus mitts by Scandia from her Matchy Matchy Club. And I finished one. I think the colours together are absolutely beautiful. The yarn I'm using, is, they're both Rama Finul um, in these two colours. And I like the fact that the contrast is... It's there, but it's actually, it's a lot stronger on the camera than it is in real life. But I wanted it to be a little bit more soft and subtle. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I f finished it and immediately was like, uh oh. <laughs> it's way too big. Not here, and not even here. It's just up here. So the thumb is also too big for me. So you have to, Obviously, once you finish doing the thumb decreases, you then put the stitches for the thumb and hold and cast on extra stitches for the hand, which you then pick up when you do the thumb. And it's literally those stitches that are pretty much, there's just too many of them. So my gauge is off. I knew that when I first started, but this was fitting so well that I didn't worry about it. And I knitted it on... I think it was 2.5 millimeter needles and now I'm working on 2.25. So I've started the second one now and they are a lot of fun. Um, this beginning bit is a lot easier because it's just four rows that you repeat and here this chart's a bit harder to kind of memorize. Once you've done one repeat, which I've done, it's a bit easier because you can look back at what you've done before and you continue that cross pattern on the inside of the hand. So these are much smaller now because I'm using a smaller needle. 
but I have a feeling it's still going to be a problem. So these are hard to put on because I've literally just done the thumb. So they're not going to look great, but they're definitely tighter and a lot thicker material because while it's too kind of heavy, heavy fingering, um, sport weight yarns knitted on 2.25 in color work, like it's going to create a very thick and warm fabric, but I'm going to finish these at some point soon. See if it solves the issue here at the top. Otherwise, if I still have the same thing, I'm just going to decide which fit I like more, the more fitted or the slightly looser and undo it until the thumb literally the point where I'm pretty much at and not cast on as many stitches for the thumb um maybe do like half the amount of stitches and then the thumb will be tighter and the hand won't be so big so it's a bit sad because no matter what when this one is done I have a whole nother one to do and having to do three is just a bit but whichever one I decide to keep the other one will be unraveled and I'll work straight from the scraps and there'll be plenty of yarn, yarn left at the end so I can either make more or do something fun with them because I really love this blue and especially with this cream. So they're close to being done. The first one I did really quickly because I enjoyed it so much. The second one has been a bit slower just because it's a bit harder to work because of the tight gauge that I now have to try and get and also kind of knowing I have a whole nother one to do is a bit doesn't exactly motivate me <laughs> I think everything else is new so let me start with a test knit because I just can't help myself I finished this test knit for Sophie of the Knit Pearl Girl and then immediately was like can I do this new one as well I almost did it again and then was like no no you don't need to test knit everything for her you can wait and buy the pattern but the one that I'm currently test knitting is the Farfa top um, and I've got a decent way already so it's a top-down construction uh, it originally was bottom up but then Sophie changed it because she said some of it was just such a pain to work so what's going on where am I where's my second raglan there it is yeah so it's I've, I'm knitting mine in a white yarn and I've actually already finished one sleeve. So you can see there's just a little bit of drama. <laughs> so you work the sleeve kind of normally and then work some increases to get this beautiful sleeve and the hem is a sewn hem. So you knit it double the length that you want it, fold it in, sew it down. A lot of pain um, because it takes so long to do and I ran out of yarn halfway through because I underestimated by a lot how much I needed but it was fine to kind of just reattach the yarn and keep working and normally I'm not a fan of like anything other than a fitted sleeve or like a straight sleeve within a decrease but you have the option for the single tier that I've done where you only increase once so you can see here where I've increased or you can do a second tier where you increase again and make it even bigger and I was like, no, I'm not a huge fan of the drama when it comes to my clothing, but this I really enjoyed knitting and I, I kind of like tried it on and I was like, this is really cute. So I still need to do the second sleeve, um, which I'll be doing soon. And I've done a decent amount of the body already, but it's fingering weight yarn. It I'm doing it on 3.25 millimeter needles. So it just grows very slowly, especially because the yarn that I'm using is Tin Linna from Sunder's Garn. And it has, so let's talk about what it has in it. 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen. And because of that kind of blend, it and the way it's kind of like made and spun, it has like three separate strands that have been lightly twisted together. And they split. <laughs> and because they split, it means that sometimes if I'm not looking and paying attention when I'm knitting, I won't catch all three of the threads. And then on the next round, I'm like, oh crap, there's something standing out. So I have to like drop down or like sometimes it happens a bit further back and pick it up properly. So I have to kind of watch my knitting, which means I just knit a lot slower and progress is a lot 
harder to make. But I'm almost at the end of this skein of yarn. So it's probably like another two, three rounds. And then I'll use this skein to work the second sleeve. And then it's just, I think I have two more skeins after that to finish off the body, which would be more than enough. And then just an eye cord edging at the top still needs to be done as well. Because what you then do, so you've got this kind of like eyelet here. Um, you can do like a button closure or something like that. And you can also do like an eye cord, like a length of eye cord, then attach it, do the eye cord around the collar, do the same thing on this side and you get a little tie that you can use to fasten that up. I love it. I love it so much. Um, it's been a lot of work. The group for this test net we've kind of all been helping each other out being like yes the sewn binder is hard but trust me it's worth it because it's so beautiful and it's just a lovely bunch of people and i can see myself making another one most people are using the recommended yarn which is the pure silk by knitting for olive i decided i wanted something a bit i don't know it, it the price difference i think isn't even that big the pure silk i think isn't that expensive considering um, and you don't need too much yarn uh, but I think I just wanted a more like really really good summer one and I wanted white for some reason I've never really worked with white yarn and for some reason I was just like nope I don't want to do the knitting for olive one <laughs> though I love knitting for olive yarn I've only haven't really worked with it yet but I have some mohair and it's oh, so soft so that's the first test knit and I've been working on that one for quite a while I have until the end of March, I believe. And so it's something I need to get done before East Anglia Yarn Festival. And it might be something that I bring because East Anglia Yarn Festival will be in a hotel and it might get quite warm and that could be a fun thing to wear. But I have another test net because I can never just have one. <laughs> but I saw this pattern and immediately fell in love and was like, I need this, I need this. And this is the project where I said that I'm almost done with it. So this is the Moreland cardigan and originally designed in neutered and held double and while i had some neutered and arrived that i could have used i wanted to use a different yarn sometimes i have this with test knitting i think that's part of the reason i also use the tin liner by sunless gun i know a lot of people will often go for the recommended yarn when they're test knitting because it's easier um you don't have to think too much about will i get gauge and then testing gauge and will the drape and everything be correct but I quite like doing something else because, unless I have the yarn already in stash, I quite like doing something else. Um, sometimes with stuff I already have in stash. So for example, with um, the Moreland cardigan, which I'm about to show, I am using um, Gilead by Dererum Natura, which was something I had in my stash for a different project. And then I was like, actually, I think this would be perfect. Did the swatch and was like, yeah, I think that's going to look good. So the colors coming off a lot more kind of mossy green it isn't like it's got some way more yellow but it's not like that um the color is called for it i believe and it's a steaked cardigan so i've got the neck on i've got the button bands on i just haven't secured and cut the steak which i might do today but the reason i really wanted to test that it is that you've got the sleeve design sleeve design leaf design running down the sleeve this really needs a good blocking but it runs all the way to the bottom here Ooh. and then at the bottom you've got this single leaf then instead of like this double they were so much fun to work it's a you work like a one by one cable and then do this kind of modified bobble and i did the sleeve so quickly because i loved it so much uh the body was also quite quick because it's on four millimeter needles with like a worsted weight yarn approximately. And so that went quite quick. And yesterday I just finished off the button band and yeah, I just need to reinforce and cut it. And I'll probably block it after reinforcing and cutting and then cut it once it's dry. But yeah, and then it's done. I don't have any buttons. So this might be something that I'll have to take either somewhere here in uh, Germany to find buttons or maybe I'll take it with me to Austria at some point. It will be very warm in this yarn. And once again, it's something I know I'm going to knit again. And I'm going to use some of my Newton that I've got in my stash to try and make this. 
in the future, but my new to dinner is in Austria, so. Yeah, there's not much to see like at the front, but it is literally just all about the sleeve design. Um, and you can see the stitch markers are where I have to then sew my buttons on. Um, yeah, because you've got the button hole here, and then the button will go in there. And I think choosing buttons will be quite tricky for this. But so I'm excited to see what this is going to look like when it um, when it's blocked, because Gilead is non superwash and it's going to bloom quite nicely. And so I think this whole stitch pattern here is going to look even better. So this is almost done. It could be finished off today, um, other than the cutting. But I think I will reinforce it today because I love reinforcing a stick. I find it so much fun. And I knitted this one quite quickly as well. Uh, because I just couldn't put it down. It was also one of the few projects with which was quite easy to work on So when I was quite ill with the flu um, I was in bed for over a week when I could knit this was one of the few projects I worked on not the sleeve because that required too much focus But I was just zooming along on the body and ends wise I don't it looks like there's a lot of ends, but They're only on beginnings and ends because everything in the middle I use spit splicing because it's on super wash yarn um, to just felt them together so no ends to weave in anywhere inside other than beginning of sleeves and end of sleeves things like that yeah so i don't have too much yarn left i don't even know if i have it here i do so this is how much i have left i had five skeins of those the midridge is quite generous um i think it's like 250 grams which from the yardage makes it more of a DK yarn, but it definitely kind of with blooming and stuff as well is more of a worsted weight yarn, which is what I needed. And the gauge swatch worked out perfectly, which is nice. And that's something to kind of consider. I know a few people have it with neutered and yarn. So they're like, well, I love these projects, but how do I choose the right yarn for it? And it really does come down to gauge swatching because you can, technically speaking, substitute any yarn for any other yarn. You might just have to alter your needle size, hold multiple strands of it together, um, or deal with the fact that the fabric is then stiff or really open and loose. But I do, this is how I got into actually gauge swatching for my project. I really enjoy it because sometimes you might think, oh, I don't have the right yarn in my stash, but you might do, and you can surprise yourself that something would work that you didn't think would work because some people also with how they knit, they might use a fingering weight yarn, but then be a loose knit, a tight knit, and so it, you could work it up in light fingering weight or sport weight yarn, and um, some yarns also bloom a lot, which changes everything, so it, it's fun. I find it really interesting. But yeah, so not much left of this, which is quite nice, especially considering I didn't buy it for this project. I bought it for a different one and was like, ah, I think I'll have about enough, but I knew with it being a commercial, ra commercial yarn, I could get more if I wanted, and dye lots is still kind of a problem, but I could have, you know, alternated the skeins. So yeah, that's that one. And then my new cast-ons. Yes. The first thing is using the leftovers for my from my uh, crescendo blouse. I started making the Honey Bucket Bag by Petite Knits. So I had to use some of these... DPNs, so I've currently got a, it's a very precarious situation um, because these are quite short. But this is what I've got so far. So it's a brioche stitch that you use here, where normally with brioche, like with the September sweater, it would be a combination of slipping one and yarn over, and then a brioche knit or a brioche purl where the yarn over and the stitch get knitted together or purled together. You do that with this one, but you also do this magical thing where you treat the yarn over and the stitch that has the yarn over as two separate stitches. It blew my mind because how I got around learning how to brioche was just treating the yarn over and the slipped stitch as one stitch. It's just one stitch. This then broke that and I remember the first round I was like, excuse me? <laughs> you are messing with me right now. And it just kind of messed with my brain a little bit, but that's how you then create this absolutely beautiful kind of like honeycomb texture. So it's exactly the same yarn as what I'm wearing. And here you can see what I mean with how much mohair I'd left. Um, and I've already used some of it in here. 
and this is how much I had left of that fifth skein of su uh, Sunday. And I've got a whole nother skein, so because this isn't going to last for this, but the mohair should be fine and the leftover Sunday I've got as well should be fine for this. So it's just something I'm working on very slowly. It's something I've wanted to make for quite a while because it should be, I think, about this size and I want to store some of my D&D &D dice in here. I think that will be really cute. And if it doesn't work out, if it's a bit, I don't know, like just isn't right, it's a cute little bag that I'll use for something else. So once again, it's not like a priority project. It's just something a bit more challenging and different to work on because it's a little bag. That's cute. I don't really make things like that. <laughs> and the next project I have is the next one from my Make 9 projects that I'm working on, where I think I kind of teased it in my Make 9 video, but you now get to see what it is. Let me just hold it up the right way. So I finally started working on the Tulip Sweater by Melody Hoffman. So here you can actually see what that Newton and Mohair look like together, and I think it's the Mohair especially helps to bring out the different colours of the Nutidin, but obviously the Mohair also has different colours. So it's top down, it's raglan, and I finished one sleeve already, because what I did is I worked until I ran out of uh, the Mohair I was working with, because the Nutidin you can just rip and reattach easily, but the Mohair you actually have to like tie properly. So the mohair I'm using is by Art Yarns. It's the silk mohair in the color Hummingbird. I was like, what am I trying to say? <laughs> and so yeah, I then, after that, decided to do a sleeve just to make sure I could get the sleeves that, uh, the length of sleeve I wanted. I had to make it longer than the pattern said I would do. And the way I wanted it lengthwise was sort of like what's considered bracelet length. So that when it's kind of like when I'm just like standing there, it sits about here. And when I then kind of like pull my hands up and things, it kind of drops down a bit further. And that's what I really wanted for this because it is going to be slightly cropped. I'm not going for a cropped, cropped sweater, but I'm also not going full length. So I just recently picked up the stitches for the second sleeve because after doing the sleeve, I then went back to work on the body and I'll be able to see it better on this side. I've actually worked a decent amount of the body now, so the rest of the mohair went into this, um, went into the body, and now I'm going to do the sleeve, and after that I can then kind of make the body as long as I want, because I think I'm going to have plenty of yarn. So I've got this mohair, which is only half a skein, um, then I've got another half, so I've got about 50 grams of mohair left, which will be more than enough, and I still have two plates of the... What's it called? My brain. Of the Nutrizen yarn that I'm using. So I've got this, which is the current one I'm working from. And then I think these are the plates it comes in. I just wind these by hand to make it easier to work with. And I think I still have two four more plates of this. So I think I'm going to have quite a bit left of the Nutrizen because I didn't use a full plate for the sleeve. And to be honest with the length that I'm after, I don't think I need to work too much more of the body because it then has the scalloped edge at the bottom and I don't want that to sit too low because I think it will then sit really weirdly. So this actually won't need too much longer. I think the first sleeve did take longer than a day. It was surprising in some ways how long it took me but I think I was just knitting a bit slower because I was enjoying the process so much. But I've been loving working on that and but once again I was like Nina you don't have to work on that because you don't have a deadline for that and you've got deadlines for other things and one of the things I've got a deadline for a self-imposed deadline most of these are self-imposed deadlines the only deadline I really have to meet is for the test knits and even then people are really understanding if stuff gets in the way I don't think people would be understanding. It's like, oh, sorry, I didn't finish your test knit because I really wanted to knit on this project for myself. That's not okay. But, you know, if other things get in the way. So I had mentioned, I think it was in my last podcast video, that I was like, oh, I want to knit for, you know, like my family. And I like that people knit for their grandmas and stuff, which is part of the reason why I did the Sunday socks for my cousin and her family. And then I finally just 
said I've had enough. I want to make shawls for my grandmas. So I'm going to make a shawl for each of my grandmas. So two shawls. I've only got two grandmas. <laughs> so I started the first one. And not too much to see yet. Um, because I only recently just got the yarn. But I wanted to cast it on and start working on it as quickly as possible. Because my grandma's birthday is in March. So if possible, I'd like to try and finish this relatively quickly. And be able to send that off to her. If it doesn't arrive for her birthday, it doesn't arrive for her birthday. But if it arrives before I have to leave for the UK, that would be really good. And it's a relatively easy pattern because it's just moss stitch. I love a moss stitch. So it's good that I picked this to do it when I need to do it quickly. And then it has these kind of like... It looks sort of like a cable. But you just work it by slipping a stitch over two other stitches. Knitting the first stitch, yarn over, knitting the next stitch. So just kind of like this pass over design. And you just repeat like the same 10, 12 rows every single time and then you're done. And the yarn I'm using is Arvetta Classic by Phil Colana again. I think the color is deep red and I'm holding it double because you need about a worsted weight yarn and this is working out really well. It is a bit tricky. Um, you have to increase on both sides every row not just on like the right side and that gets a bit hard when you've got two strands of yarn to kind of make sure you've picked both of them up but this is the Vade, Vade I think I didn't say that um, it's one of the patterns from 52 weeks of shawls because I wanted to make use of the patterns I already have instead of having to buy one and the reason I'm using Avisa Classic instead of like for example Peruvian Highland Wool by Phil Colana would have been easy it's one strand it's roughly a worst of weight yarn but I did order it as well in a roughly similar color but I was like I think it's going to be too rustic for my grandma I think um we recent well mum recently ordered her some of it a classic so she could make a hat for someone and she just kept swarming about like how amazing the yarn was and how soft and I was like okay well then she should have a shawl in this but I ordered the Peruvian Highland wool just to see. Maybe it is quite similar because I'd never worked with it. And it's not going to work out. So I'm going to use that yarn for something else. It will be used. There is never a worry about yarn not being used. But yeah, so the progress has been relatively slow. Because I've been trying to focus on the Morlin cardigan. Because I think that test knit needs to be done sometime around mid-March. So that one's already pretty much done. The Farfa top, obviously I still have a decent amount to go. But... There's only so long I can work on it in a day before it kind of just starts to hurt. So this is kind of the other project I'm trying to focus on. So, like I said, I was going to talk about all of this later. You're also going to get a little preview of a new cast on. I didn't share in my German one because I hadn't started yet. I did share the yarn in that video. I still have some yarn from Waiku Yarns where I'd knitted one sock but didn't finish a second one. Because the way that we decided to do it was I wasn't going to knit matching socks with the yarn. Just to be able to show the yarn off better in different patterns. So I've just started with this colour here from Waiku Yarns. Um, I'm going to do a Hermione everyday sock because I love that pattern. And I've got an, another skein of yarn here of theirs where I'm going to make another sock. I'm not sure if I will make the another Hermione everyday sock. But I want to do something a bit easier because for the other ones I've made for Lydia from Waiku Yarns, I made socks from 52 Weeks of Socks. And they're quite challenging patterns in the sense there's a lot to kind of do and keep track of. And the like pattern motifs and stuff aren't always the easiest. So I wanted to give myself a bit of a break and work on something a bit easier. Plus the Hermione Everyday Sock is a free pattern and I know it's really well loved. I've made my own pair and love them. So I thought that was a good thing to show off as well because then people would be like, oh, well, I love that pattern. I love this yarn. Let me get it and don't have to buy the pattern because it's just free. So it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous color. I love this color so much. So there should be some leftovers and I might be able to make myself something with them, <laughs> with it. Otherwise, uh, Waku Yarns will be at East Anglia Yarn Fest. So I might just have to see if they have a skein of that yarn because it's really pretty. Let's talk... Let's just quickly talk about the plans. I've already kind of said it with all of them, but I'll quickly cover it again. So, obviously I need to block the Breathe and Hope shawl. 
because I need to bring that with me, then I'll trim the ends and I want it blocked so it's nice and pretty and ready to for Jen to show off if she wants to do that at East Anglia Yarn Fest. So that's one thing. The next thing is I want to get the these the second sock for this done. Um so I can send them off when I'm in the UK. I then also this kind of goes into acquisitions, but I'll quickly talk about the project and I'll share the yarn and the acquisitions kind of bit. But I have another skein of a well, ball of a West Yorkshire spinners yarn. Mm -hmm. Um and it's in the colour wood pigeon, and I want to use that to make a pair of socks for another friend of mine from York. I also want to make his girlfriend a pair of socks. Um I'm friends with her as well, but I know her because she's dating my friend. So I want to try and make her a pair of socks. Then I the other shawl, like the shawl for my other grandma, I want to make that. The September sweater needs to be done. And I also want to make some mittens for a friend of mine who will be at East Anglia Yarn Fest. So it's a lot of different projects. And obviously also these socks. But it's only like, it is a pair of socks, but one in each colour, so it'll be really fun. So that's something that I'm going to be working on soon. The yarn for the other pair of West Yorkshire spinners is, so this is Wood Pigeon, and he's got about the same sized feet as my other friend, so they don't take me too long when I focus on them, like most things, but it should be doable, but it's also a thing that I can bring with me. I'm going to be in the UK for a couple of days, so I might be able to try and get these done, plus when I'm flying, because I'm flying via Amsterdam, so I've got two flights and waiting at the airport in Amsterdam, so it should be, there should be plenty of knitting time. So there's those socks for his girlfriend's socks, as in like the person who's getting these socks. I'm gonna use some of the Arveta Classic I have in a variety of different colours, and either do some colour work socks or some kind of like stripey, uh, scrappy socks, something fun. So she'll be getting those. For my other grandma, I'm going to make the Limelight, which is also from 52 Weeks of Socks, and I'm going to use two skeins of Marzipan for that. love this colour. And two skeins of this colour where I can't remember the name. Is it just beige? So it's just slightly darker. And it's like a lace shawl, but it's not colour work. You work one section, like in this colour, one section in the darker colour, and you alternate. So I just wanted something quite neutral for her and easy to just kind of wear with all the different things that she wears. So it is a fingering weight shawl, so it's going to take a little bit longer. Her birthday is in May, so there's not as much of a pressure to get this done. Ideally, I'd like to send both of them off at the same time so they both get a shawl at the same time, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's fine. I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. The mittens I want to make is from this book that I just recently finally ordered, I've been wanting to order it for a really long time, so this is Knitting with Disney. And I want to make the Fairy Godmother Mittens. So I've ordered a lot of different colours of Arveta Classic to make this, and the scraps from this I want to try and use for the socks for my other friend. Um, because like for the reds and the blues and the greens you don't need a lot of those colours. And then there's also some, there's a grey, a beige, and a, or a grey, a brown, and a black, or something like that. So there's also some like neutral colours I can use with pops of colour. But yeah, so these I want to make for another friend of mine who's in the UK. And everything else I've already shared. But yeah, so some of that yarn was also obviously acquisitions, new bits in my life, that book is new, and... I haven't spent too much time looking at it, but for me the biggest thing was the mittens. But then there's also a few other bits, obviously you've also got the socks. And, where is it? I do think some of the jumpers are really cool, like, ooh, the poison apple jumper I think is really nice. And a fun little design, but then I think the most epic jumper in this book is the Beauty and the Beast one. So there's a variety of different things, there's also a... Lion King one. Um, I really want to make these Alice in Wonderland mittens for a friend of mine because I think in the blue and the white as well, that's so pretty. 
I also really love this Infinity Cal inspired by Pocahontas. So there's a lot of stuff where I make. I like the fact that it's a bit more subtle Disney than just like. <laughs> oh yep, I know what that is. <laughs> so, I think over over the time I'll probably make quite a few of these. I also think the Lion King jump is really cute with all the different animals. Where I'm like, but you could totally use that for like other things as well. <laughs> So that's a really fun book um, where I'm hoping to start knitting those mittens very soon. While it is colour work and Aveta Classic I think isn't always the easiest to do with colour work because it's super wash merino, I believe. So it's quite soft. Um, I still think it's... I think it should be doable, especially on mini circulars. The other book I have is this one here. It's Swedish, it's completely in Swedish, but I saw someone on Instagram post a picture of one of the designs from here and I was like, I need this book. And since I'm doing the Hitlersvag jumper with a pattern which is just in Norwegian and using Google Translate and websites um, that explain knitting abbreviations from different languages, I was like, I feel confident enough with this. And then I'll have a couple of different designs. I don't think there is an English version of this book. There might be one coming because I know there are for some of her other books. Oh, this is by Erica Abeg. And the reason I bought it is because of one design, but there's other beautiful ones in there. But it's this one here. So this will be the first one from this book I want to make. And I don't know yet what yarn and when, but I fell in love with this. So I was like, it has to, it has to happen. It has to happen. And very soon, please. So that's one thing. Um, other designs I really like from here. Forget to show things off. There's a couple of really cute ones. And there's a couple of designs in here where I'm like, I wouldn't make them for myself. But I think they could be really nice presents for other people. But, where is it? There's one in particular one design in particular that I really love because they've given you lots of different ways that you can use kind of like the stitch pattern and the pattern at the jumper itself to make a lot of different things. So this one here, like I think this is really fun. Um, and the color version that I really like is this one. So you can then, I'm assuming it's steaked. And I think that blue and white is just really pretty. Yeah, and it's just something a bit different, whereas, like, I often, on Ravelry, but also with books and stuff, go, oh, if it's not in English or German, well, I guess I can't make it. And I'm like, well, no, I can. And it would be quite nice to kind of, you know, not actually be able to speak these different languages, but I can read a knitting pattern. <laughs> the other book that I got over Christmas from my mum is Worsted by Amy from La Bienna May. So she released this book with liner publications where a couple of different designers included patterns using her new Corridor, Cori Worsted? I think it's just called Cori Worsted. And my mum ordered it from La Bienna May, so it has her signature, her little autograph, and I think that's so cute. And uh, let me just quickly check. Oh, <laughs> the yarn, yeah, it's Cori Worsted. So there's some really beautiful designs. The yarn being La Bienna May is expensive. So I don't think any of the garments I'll ever be able to make with her yarn. But with some of the garments like this one here, I'm happy to then just use other worsted weight yarn. And I think I even have some in my stash that I can use. So there's quite, I think most of the designs I really do love. There's a few where I'm like, it's not really my cup of tea, but could potentially, you know, become a sample knit in the future for someone. Um, I really like Andrea Maury's cardigan. Very different for me and something I didn't think I would wear, but it's something I could see myself making in the future because I think it'll be really nice. But what I did do, because I think it was at the end of January or like within the month of January, she was having a kind of spring cleaning sale, I think she called it. So it was like 20% off everything that was in stock. And I was like, wow. If I'm going to make a project from this book with her Cori Worsted yarn, I'm going to make use of that discount. But I looked at jumper quantities and I was like, nah, I can't afford that. Maybe one day in the future, but not right now. 
But something I wrote, my favorite jumper pattern though from this book. Where can you see it well? Oh, I guess sort of here and here. Um, is the stratified. And then you can also see a better picture there. I think the colors, the texture of it, absolutely beautiful. But there's also, I think it's called strata, just strata, is it? Yeah. So it's a hat made similar kind of, it's the same colors, similar kind of patterns and things. And I bought yarn for this. You need four skeins, so it's still quite pricey. But I've got some gorgeous colors for this. Similar to what they did, but I changed out some of the colors um, because they just weren't really my cup of tea. So I think this rust color might be the same because it's just rust, yeah. So this is the same. Um, this is a different green. So in the pattern they use olive juice and I went for the Shire instead, which is a really beautiful forest green. It looks a lot more kind of brown and muddy, but not. And then this color is the same as in the pattern. It's Winterfell, which is a really dark blue. And the one that I then also chained changed out uh yeah so you're meant to use dawn which is a light pink and i was like i'm not the biggest pink fan and then i saw this color called quartz fume and i was like yes yes this I love. so now that i've got my wool winder from my mom this will be a lot easier to then kind of cake up and quickly work and i'm so excited it's really lovely it's 75 percent falkland corridale 25 percent gotland so it's got some bite to it which is going to be really nice for color work but in my opinion it's a really nice soft yarn um once again softness is such a personal thing it's not soft like a merino it's not soft like cashmere or silk but or like angora Ooh, so soft but it is a really nice soft woolly wool love it so I'm excited to knit up that and I'll have plenty of scraps to either make another one, which I could, I don't know, give to my mum if you wanted or someone else, or kind of use it in a different kind of design because that yarn will not be wasted considering how expensive it was, but also how beautiful it is. It feels amazing. Then something not yarn related is something I've wanted to share for months now. So in September last year when I was in London visiting friends of mine when I went to try yarns. I don't think I shared these, but I bought some of these like labels that you can show uh, sew in. I'm just gonna hide this one it has a swear word, which I think is funny, but I'm just not gonna show it on here. Um, but so I bought I think two or three different designs. I've got these two with me. I might have some more in Austria, and I then also bought um, my mum some. And if I remember correctly, I think. Mum had also bought some and then we kind of like swapped. I bought her some, she bought me some. I think it went like that, I can't remember. But yeah, so I've got one which uh, says wear the crap, different word, out of me. And then the other one says look after me, treat me with care, use common sense, wash only when di dirty, mend me if I break. And then it just has like a hand wash symbol and stuff like that. So they're really cute. And then the other thing that I've had for, I swear, even longer is some labels that Sophie from the Knit Pearl Girl created. So she released three different designs. Um, and I really want to use this on some of the like test knits. For example, this one I can sew it in. I haven't yet. And uh, also some of the other patterns of hers that I've made. So this one here says, uh, I survived Sleeve Island, which I thought was really cute and funny. Um, so you just sew these in. Um, Andalusian stitch everything because she, the Aosta uses this and a lot of her other designs as well. And then my favorite is this one here. So it's the dots, a pearl, the normal square is just knit and then you've got a pearl again and that's kind of like, and I think that's really cute. So yeah, so she sent, she actually, she sent me six in total, two of each of those designs um, because I saw her when I was in London because I went to the knitting and stitching show, we went together and we were then kind of talking and then she, when I got back she said she was releasing these and I was like okay I'm buying some and she was like let me send them to you for free so thank you Sophie they're amazing I think they're really really cute so I'm not too sure which one I'm going to put into this one because I think I think it's going to be this one because one is my favorite um and while there's no like real pearls in this design I'm like I think it, I think that will be nice and I, I don't really 
I like knitting sleeves. I find it better than the body. Um, I find it a lot more fun, especially if there's decreases. If, it, if there's increases, I do struggle with sleeves. And one final thing that I wanted to share, once again, this is something I didn't get to share off in my German video, is I last night swatched, and I have already blocked, for the next Make 9 that I think I'm going to make, which is Satsuki by Sari Nordland from the Amirisu magazine. So the yarn that I'm using is Lana Grossa Eco Puno, which is like a wool alpaca uh, cotton mix. And so that's this one here. And then the like mohair I'm using is Pegida number three, 40% mohair, 37% extra fine merino, 23% polyamide. This is a thicker mohair. It's a more like fingering weight mohair. So I was worried that my gauge would be really off, but actually worked out really well it's a little bit different but i think i'm i might not i'm going to calculate that if i keep this gauge um, and knit the size i want how much bigger it's going to be but this is what the swatch looks like i love how these colors have come out together and what you can't feel how soft this is it's so fluffy so I was a bit annoyed that it has, um, this yarn has polyamide in it. Um, but the actual like silk mohair would have been so expensive. So I just went for this one, um, because I didn't want to spend an absolute fortune on Lana Colsa yarn. And, but I'm actually quite happy with how it worked out. And I think also the thing I needed to remember was there is a bit of a difference between something like polyamide and acrylic yarn. So polyamide is kind of like nylon and I often wear jumpers that have nylon in them. Not my favorite anymore, but it is just kind of what I have used a lot in the past. And, and yeah, this kind of surprised me and I really liked it. So I'm really excited to work this up at some point soon. And which I shouldn't though. I shouldn't start it anytime soon because, well, I rattled off the list of things that I need to get done before the end of March. I think it's like the last week of March that I'm flying out, so... <laughs> There's a lot to do, lots of knitting to be done, but a lot of it is smaller project like socks and mittens, so shouldn't be too bad. That's everything, and it was a lot. <laughs> But that's what happens when you don't film for quite a while. I haven't shared all of the things that have come into my life recently. I just kind of picked some things that are kind of important for like the next few like weeks or months. And I've kind of decided to change things up a bit and do it a bit more. I've kind of always done it. That instead of kind of sharing here are the things I bought, I think what I'm actually going to try and do is either at the end show more like like I've kind of just done here, like, oh, I've swatched for this. So I really, you know, I'm going to show it off because it will hopefully be knitted up soon or something like this, that I've got the book as well. So it kind of ties in with that books. I still want to share, but with yarn acquisitions, I think I'm going to keep it more to here's something I bought either recently or sometimes even a while ago, but it's something where I want to start working on it soon because I think that's actually going to be a bit more interesting than just like, look at this pretty yarn, especially with some things if it's like limited edition or something and or like it has a limited release and then you can't get it anyway. So let me know what you think of that. Um, and that is all the knitting content. Life-wise, things are getting better. I have decided to stay in this apartment. I can't remember if I've said this. Um, so this is in Griesheim instead of Darmstadt where I work. It's not far with the tram. And I've just kind of enjoyed not having to go house hunting and then have to, you know, worry about internet connection and stuff. It's all sorted here. So obviously I'm paying quite a bit for what I'm getting, but it's what happens. You pay for ease and convenience. And I like the area that I'm in. So I've kind of been like, mm, it's going to be good. I'm going to stay here. Work-wise, it's kind of, I'm starting to really settle in and the fact that I was ill really set me back and I'm kind of starting to really get into the swing of things. Work is starting to be a bit more productive and everything and still just loving it here. Absolutely 
love how things are done. I had a bit of an issue finding a doctor that would actually um, give me an appointment because so many places were like, oh, we're not taking new patients on. And I was like, yeah, but I need someone. And I didn't want to have to travel so far in case if I need to see a doctor at a time when I'm really not well enough to leave the house. Like sometimes in doctors will come to your house if there's a need, but I don't think that's going to be a thing if I'm not their patient and they're not going to come from like another city. <laughs> that's the word. Yeah, so that was a bit of a pain and there's just a lot of things where it takes a little while until everything's sorted because as a student you don't have the same sort of problems because you're just a student <laughs> and everything's kind of taken care of for you. So, but yeah, um, I'm doing okay. There are some things that have been a bit tough recently, but that is life, sadly. And I think it's part of the reason why I've also been knitting so much more. And I've got a few more kind of ideas for videos that aren't podcast videos, but kind of obviously still knitting related. So hopefully I'll be able to do those. And as I get into the swing of things and form of routine, it will be easier for me to kind of keep up with videos and stuff. And you can look forward to me filming at East Anglia Yarn Festival and sharing kind of my, my little adventures. <laughs> and that's everything, I think. We've already been here long enough. Um, amazingly, my recording time is under two hours, just. <laughs> So you get a nice long video as well. I'm sure there's things I kind of didn't talk about in the detail that I wanted to, but that happens. I also think it's not like you'll never see the stuff again. I'll wear it or, you know, especially with the socks with the no nylon, I want to talk about that because they're both no nylon socks. Even the blacker ones don't have nylon. They have a lot of mohair, which also gives the strength. So that is everything. I hope you've all been well. I know the UK, when I'm filming this is being hit really hard by a storm and it's hit parts of like Europe and Germany's getting some of it as well but it hasn't been anywhere near as bad at least not for me and from what I've seen in the UK it's been awful so I hope people are okay I know a lot of people have been posting they haven't had any like electricity which is terrifying and yeah so I hope everyone's doing okay happy knitting and hope you enjoyed this kind of longer video um, I know I always do, but I know not everyone does. And thank you so much for watching and for your support. And like always, everything will be linked below. Um, I do links for Ravelry because it's so much work otherwise for me to go through and find all these individual pages. So if you can't access Ravelry, I know this doesn't make it easily accessible, but if you could just kind of message me and I'll find you a link, I'm happy to do that. Um, I know that makes it more work for people who struggle with Ravelry, which isn't great from an accessibility point of view, but I also need to think about the fact that I'm one person doing this, editing and putting everything together. So Ravelry is the quickest and easiest way for me to do it and to be able to kind of spend more time knitting and also kind of doing the things that allow me to knit and not afford yarn. So I do apologize for that and hopefully in the future it's something I can maybe dedicate more time to we'll have to see but yeah always feel free to reach out um if you do kind of need help with anything i also love helping people when they're struggling with their knitting patterns just saying like if you're struggling with your knitting i love figuring things out for people and yeah you'll also have my instagram below you'll have um my ko-fi account below if you feel like donating and speaking of ko-fi actually i mentioned in my last video the Dobler Toffler that I finished knitting and how I've got a translation in English and in German for it and I think the best thing for me to do is I might try and include the translation on the Ravelry project page that I've made if it will fit on I don't know if there's a word limit but the other thing I've thought of doing is on Ko-Fi you can kind of like post pictures and share things and write things so it's almost like a blog almost and there's things you can access for free and things you have to pay for. So I thought for free, I'll include the translations on there if that works. I'm not gonna charge for that, it's not my pattern. And also I wouldn't wanna charge for it anyway. So you'll be able to hop over to my Ko-Fi soon, hopefully I'll, I'll do that if you wanna make them and use my, make use of the translation that I've got. Um, I'd encourage you to still download the original pattern just to kind of show there's traffic in that area 
and people are interested in it but then you know you can make use of the translation I've got and yeah you don't have to then donate to Ko-Fi or anything that's completely optional and yeah that's everything I'm gonna go eat something make myself a cup of tea sit down and do some knitting and enjoy the rest of my evening so thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye